This is the second part of the Minesweeper example programmed in JavaScript and rendered to a canvas element. If you hadn't already watched the first part, I suggest you do so as the second part makes much less sense without it. We now create our update game method which will behave differently depending on which screen is currently being displayed. If the currently displayed screen is menu, then we'll check and see if there's any unprocessed mouse state click events. If there is an unprocessed click event, then we'll loop through all of the available game difficulties. If the mouse state Y position, its vertical position, falls between the first and second menu box property of the currently viewed difficulty in this loop, then we'll begin a new level at that difficulty and then break from the loop. When we've checked all of the game difficulties, We'll then clear the mouse state click event. If the current screen is either won or lost, then we simply look and see if there is any unprocessed mouse state click event, in which case we change the current screen to menu and clear the click event. Otherwise, the current screen being displayed will be playing, showing an ongoing game, in which case we see if there's an unprocessed click event. If this is the case, we set the value of cdiff to a reference to the current game difficulty, and then we check and see if the click event fell within the Minesweeper grid. We check and see if the click event is greater than or equal to the offset x and offset y globals, and less than these values plus the current difficulty width and height multiplied by the tile width and height respectively, in which case we calculate the index of the, uh, the x and y of the tile that was clicked upon by subtracting the offset x and offset y global values from the mouse click event x and y values and dividing the result by the tile width and height and flooring the value. We then look at which mouse button was pressed for this click event. If it was the left mouse button, button 1, then we call the click method for the appropriate grid position. Otherwise, we call the flag method for the corresponding grid position. If the click event didn't fall on the Minesweeper grid, but fell at a y value greater than or equal to 380, then we'll change the current screen to menu. After these click events have been processed, we'll reset the mouse state click event to null. We'll now create a non-load event handler for our window, which will begin by setting the global CTX variable to a reference to the 2D drawing context of our canvas element. Next we'll create a click event handler for our canvas element which will fire on the left mouse button click which will calculate the position relative to the top left of the canvas using the real pause method we'll be creating later and assign this to the mouse state global click property. We'll also add a mouse move event handler to our canvas element which will calculate the actual position relative to the top left of the canvas again using the real pause method and it will set the x and y property of the mouse state global to these values. Finally, we'll add a context menu event handler for our canvas element, which will listen for a right mouse button click on the canvas. When this happens, we'll prevent the default action from occurring, and then we'll calculate the actual position, again using the real pause method, and assign these values to the mouse state click event. The third property of the mouse state click event denotes which button was pressed, 1 for the left mouse button or 2 for the right mouse button. We'll then let the browser know that when it's ready to begin rendering, to call the draw game method, we'll use the request animation frame method to do this. We'll now begin our function that will draw our game menu, which will begin by setting the canvas text alignment to center, the font, and also the fill style, the color with which things will be drawn to black.
We'll then create a variable y with an initial value of 100, which is the position at which we wish to begin drawing game difficulties on our game menu. We'll then loop through all of the available game difficulties, and we'll set a flag as to whether or not the mouse is currently over this difficulty by seeing if the mouse y position currently falls between y minus 20 or y plus 10. If the mouse is currently over, we'll set the fill style to a blue color. We'll then set the menu box property for this difficulty to y minus 20 and y plus 10. This will be the area on which the mouse can be clicked to select this game difficulty. And then we'll draw the text with the difficulty's name at this y position and then increment the y value by 80. If we calculated that the mouse position was over this difficulty's hitbox, then we will change the fill style, the color, back to black. We'll now set the value of y to 120 and change to a smaller font, and we'll look through the difficulties again. This time, if the difficulty has no best time, then we'll draw the text no best time at this y value. Otherwise, we will draw the best time, calculating whether or not we need to draw minutes, and if so, drawing the number of minutes, and then drawing the number of seconds with decimal places, and drawing this with the text best time at this y position. We'll then increase the y value by 80. Our draw playing method will draw when there's an ongoing game. We begin by calculating the half width and half height of a tile and assigning the current difficulty setting to the variable cdiff. We'll then set the canvas properties text alignment and text baseline and the font color as well as the font and we will draw the current difficulty's name at the top of the screen. At the bottom of the screen we'll draw the text return to menu. Now if we're drawing a screen other than the lost screen, then in the top left we'll set the text alignment to left and we'll draw the number of mines for this difficulty setting. We'll then decide which time to draw depending on whether or not the current screen is currently 1. Uh, if the screen is 1 then we will use the game state time taken property, otherwise we'll use the current ongoing game time. And we'll calculate the number of seconds and number of minutes and number of milliseconds to draw and draw this towards the top right of the screen. Now if the current game state screen is either lost or won, We'll set the font to a large bold font and centralize it. And just above the game grid, we will draw either the text game over or cleared. Now we're ready to begin drawing our game grid. So first of all, we'll set the stroke style to a gray color. And then we'll draw a stroke rectangle around the edge of where the gray game grid will be drawn. We'll then set the font and the text alignment ready for drawing the tile danger levels for each tile. We'll now loop through all of the tiles in our game grid array and calculate the x position px and the y position py by multiplying the x position and y position of the tile by the tile width and height respectively and then adding the offset x or offset y global property respectively. If the current screen is lost and this tile has a mine then we'll set the fill color to a bright red and we'll draw a filled rectangle at this position. We'll then set the fill style back to black and we'll draw the text X at this position to denote a mine here.
Otherwise, if the current state of this grid tile is visible, we'll set the fill style to a light grey. We'll then check and see if the tile at this position has a danger value greater than zero, in which case we'll change the fill style to black and we will draw the text with the danger value for this tile in the middle of the tile. Finally, for cases where the tile is not visible, We'll set the fill style to a median grey and fill a rectangle at this position for this tile and also stroke the outsides of this rectangle for this tile. If the current state of the tile is flagged, we'll draw a blue letter P over the middle of the tile to represent a flag. Our draw game function will be our main game update loop. It will first check and see if the CTX global variable is null, in which case we'll simply exit the function as nothing can be done. We'll then calculate the current frame time in milliseconds from the date.now property and update the last frame time to the current frame time if no less frame time had yet been set if its value was zero. We'll then calculate the time elapsed by subtracting the last frame time from the current frame time and add this to the global game time. We'll then call the update game method. Next we'll do some frame counting. We'll calculate the current number of seconds elapsed since the epoch by dividing the date.now property by 1000 to get whole seconds and rounding this down. If this value is not the same as the current second global property, then we'll update the current second global property to be this second, and we'll update the frame's last second property to be the current value of the frame count global, and set the frame count global back to 1. Otherwise, we simply increment the frame count global by 1. We then clear the canvas by setting the fill colour to a greyish blue and filling a rectangle that covers the entirety of the canvas area. If the current game state screen property is menu, then we'll call the draw menu method, otherwise we'll call the draw playing method. We'll then draw the frame count to the top left of the screen, and we will update the last frame time to be the value of current frame time. We'll then let the browser know that when it's ready to draw another frame, to call the draw game method again. We'll do this using request animation frame. Finally, we'll create a function called realpos, which will convert the x and y position of a mouse event that occurs on our browser window to its actual position relative to the top left corner of our canvas element game. It will do this by stepping through the canvas element plus any of its parent elements calculating their offset and subtracting that value from the x and y position of the mouse event. It will then return the x, y position that's been updated. When completed and launched in the browser, this example produces a simple but complete implementation of the Minesweeper game.